So, Ruby has given you some little bonnets. They're so cute. Do you have your book? And you have your pattern? It's called Little Miss Bonnet. Little Miss Bonnet, turn to your book, and I'm going to show you some little things leading up to the baby. Baby things are so sweet, aren't they? So, this is what I couldn't wait to show you. So, I have a collection, and inside this box, I do not know where this came from, but it's pretty old. It does say, oh, it says made in Japan, but inside are the cutest little slippers. Aren't they cute? all with the stitching and all with the little French knots and little embroidery work. I just think they're so cute. So we've got the little slippers for the baby. And then this, what, this is a dress. Um, Teresa is having a new baby. And, uh, her daughter. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> Teresa's daughter is having her second baby already. And this is a little boy too, huh? And I showed her this and I said, well, this is like a baptismal dress. This is what they had. You could order from a catalog, but can you see all of the embroidery work at the top? And this, you just cut it out. This says Supreme Textile Company. It's just called Baby Dress, but it's got little um, eyelid on the sleeves. You could slip them. Um, ribbon through that and ribbon through here do the embroidery work her mother does that beautiful embroidery work you know that so it i you don't want to launder it i know it's dirty but you shouldn't launder it until you get your embroidery work done this is the little dress and then it also comes with a little slip for the baby's baptismal so beautiful all the embroidery work i did one one for um some of the grand the grandbabies, I don't think they ever wore it, but I did it. It was just the pleasure of doing all the embroidery work and everything. So that's so sweet. But this last one is really fun. I have the original paperwork on it. It's called Sleepy Head Quilt. And here it is right here. It looks pretty worn. I wish I could find a date. Ah, 1944, Heirloom Needlework Work Guild. 1944, looks pretty bad, huh? But let me see inside. Oop, I guess I'm not supposed to open it. Anyhow, inside is all the paperwork that goes with it all the little instructions and all of this. Oh, look, an Scotty applique quilt by Alice Brooks. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. This is really cute. But this is what we're looking at, sleepy head. How to do sleepy head. And there is the Scotty dog. Look how fun that is. That is very, very cute. Want to see sleepy head quilt? Yes. All right, and here's the letter. And it's, a, um, it's been silk screened on here. Aw, isn't that cute? Very, very cute. I did send it, I, I just got the um, top. I sent it to my hand quilter in Alma, Kansas, to Arlene Meyer. She did the hand quilting and Teresa did the binding on it. Is it cute? Very, very cute. It's on a really sweet backing, too. Ooh. So, which leads us right into our Little Miss Bonnet. Do you mind if you wear the bonnet? No, I don't mind. He doesn't care. <laughs> Good. Okay. Bears talk back to you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here is, whoops, this is the large size. This is the Little Miss Bonnet. This is the small size. It just has, it's two very simple things. It's got ribbon in the back where it's gathered and it's supposed to be tied into a little bow. 
Let's see if I can tie a bow. Um, all these little dress things are new to me. You, I raised boys, you know. I raised the two boys, and then they gave me four little girls. It's kind of different. I'm worried when they're all teenagers. Okay, there's the bow. And let's just put it on the little bear. And we'll just turn back the little front like that. Is that cute? Aww. Well, if nothing else, you can make it for a stuffed animal, huh? <laughs> and then there are the little ribbon ties underneath. See if I can do this kind of from the back. There. Okay. This is um, Ruby's design. And they, okay, Puffetown is very cute, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Fits the bear better than your little baby. And then I also made it, there's two sizes of your pattern. You have a small, this is the small. And um, there's a larger Little Miss Bonnet. And I looked at the picture right here in your paperwork. And it shows an older girl and just the little bonnet on the head. And you can take the little bows and wrap them underneath their hair in the back just to hold them down different. Or you can tie them under their neck. So anyhow, this morning I got up. I said, OK, I'm going to run right over to Becca's house. She ha I had this little hat. And she put her little hat on here. And that's how it looks. And then this is how it looks from the front. And I didn't actually put any little ties right here on it. I, th I thought it was just really cute without it. But you could tie that down so it sticks or, or even little bobby pins or something like that. And um, I was laughing because, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I saw, oh, it needs little flowers on it. And I remembered. Chris showed me the picture of Zoe with a big flower in her hair. I think this is the cutest picture. She is on the top of a slide. She looks like she's getting ready to sing an opera. <laughs> Don't you think? She is on stage there for the whole world to see. But I think some kind of little buttons or something would look really cute on the little bonnet too. Don't you? Very, very cute. Okay, the two youngest grandchildren, granddaughters. Okay, so you want to see how to do it? Yeah. It's very simple. Whoops. So you have the pattern. Do you guys have the pattern? Yeah. Oops, I keep on pulling out the wrong pattern. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let me see. You got, if you all have it, you have it all in the back, right? the bonnet. Okay. So this is what it looks like down here. In the bottom picture, the wrong side. It is cut on the fold. Cut on the fold. And we just put a little notch in the center, just a little V, so that you can remember where the fold is. It shows along the line drawing that there is a small hem turn in and right on your pattern the little V is clipped so that you can fold that up fold up that at the V and sew down a casing and that is what becomes this part you run the ribbon through and I'll put that through in just a minute cool thank you so it's kind of like you have to make two patterns. You have to make another paper pattern because this was cut right out of um, the pattern. This is overlapping on it, so you need to make a copy and pin. This is where the little notch is to cut in and just hem it. Okay, so that's the main part. Simple. Maybe a half an hour. The time that takes the most is finding your scissors or whatever, your fabric. So then the brim is very, very easy. 
This is the fabric on the brim. This is the fabric side. And this is the print side. I'm sorry. This is the solid side. Blech. You knew that, huh? OK, so what we decided to do was put a little interfacing in there. We thought this little brim was a little floppy. So we decided we would put some interfacing in to make it stiffer. You could do iron-on interfacing, or you could use like um, a, just some, something stiff in between. So it's the three layers that are all stacked up. It's the interfacing, the main fabric, and the accent color. All put together, and all you do is so, starting the whole way, start on the edge, so a little, the little end, so all along there, and then on the other end. So it's pretty easy if you look at the picture right there. And then you turn it right side out. Doo -doo. And it actually tells you to press this seam open so that whenever you turn it like this, the edges are turned nicely. They re look really good, don't they? Mm -hmm. And just the little ends here. OK, on this um, plain fabric, turn under this edge a quarter of an inch. We're going to use this to um, help finish off the inside. OK? So if you look at that picture, does it all look like this? Look at the top picture, OK? And then you just take and you pin this. Find the center. Good, there's the center. You turn everything back out of the way. Then we're going to find pins. Am I going to find pins? Teresa allots me pins. You're afraid if you give me too many, I'll just lose them. Huh? That is the truth. OK, so if you just go ahead and start right here. And even though it's a curve, there's not too much to worry about. You just uh, line up, keep on lining up these edges right here. Just the e bottom edge, this outside edge is the most important part to me. I think you want to really line those up because I spent about an hour trying to fidget with my end because it didn't look nice. So try to do it really good the first time, right? And then just ease everything else in between. But see, there's, it's, there's just not that much to ease. So it was Ruby McKim's granddaughter and Barbara Eckmeyer that worked on these little patterns together. This is her fabric right here. This is the um, Ruby the 30s Ruby's Treasures for Paintbrush Studio. And that's what I used in my little quilt. And actually, I think I'm going to finish that little quilt tomorrow. I'm very excited about it. Did I tell you that we're going to have a, a baby shower for Brianna on Thursday? The staff is going to have a, a little baby shower and give her that little panda quilt. OK, so I need to go back a little bit and ease in more. Whoop, that, that works. Just a little stretch and get that in there to ease it down. And then all you do is do the quarter inch seam all around there. All right, you guys all still awake enough for me to sew it? Mm -hmm. Are you good? Yeah. OK, let's move the bear. So, and we'll get it in here. So, do you have any questions you want to ask? What, what fell? What fell? Yeah. Uh, the oh, the bodkin. Yeah, here, we'll let Teresa, maybe you can pick it up. I have a hard time. Ah. Oh, okay. So, now the ribbon. The ribbon can be like, um, three eighths to a half inch. We just used what we had. It worked really good. And okay, now I'm starting right here on the end. And I'm like, okay, 
I'm not going to do this twice. I'm going to get my little jumper strap scrap in there. Okay, and just feed this through. I've got my quarter inch foot. Okay, what do you want to know? Ask me while I sew this. Just going to do a quarter of an inch seam. Yeah? No? Whoa. Are they still there, Teresa? I think so. They're watching. They're watching? Oh, you thought I was going to sew over them, huh? What's that? The new clips? Smaller ones? Oh, yeah, I guess we could have clipped this without putting pins in. We could have. They're clips. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm so um, hesitant of, of new things first. I just make fun of them, and then I use them, and I think they're so cool. Patty left, didn't she? She went home to watch a movie. I know she did. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's going to go make that quilt. She is so funny. She is so excited about the Aki quilt cutter. She can't get enough of it. And so I'm really excited, too. There. I did it. Okay, get those clips here. Hurry up. He's looking for them. He's looking for them. So now you just fold this down and just turn the whole quilt, hold the whole brim, the whole quilt, the whole brim. And now you just tuck this in and pull this over and just make sure that you pin it past that row of stitching. Uh-oh, he's, he's not coming, he's not coming. Oh, okay, Orion. Let me see what you have. Oh, so right over the clips. Yep. There probably isn't anything. Right those over. are those are really pretty. There probably isn't anything you're really supposed to sew over, right? Oh, wow! Those well, are entire. You were supposed to be able to. Oh, they are very flat. Let's see. You are. That's what it says. But uh, really. Huh? Well, I think what it is is that they're so skinny and you can sew right next to them. You can take little so stitches? The, the wonder clips sort of batter and then uh, eat you off the end. Well, they have barbs on them, so you just push them on the stitch. Yeah. I wouldn't sew over them. Conversation, conversation. So if you cover this row of stitching, then you can turn it from the right side and just stitch in the ditch, and you will catch this back edge. But I think it would be so relaxing to sit down with a good TV show and hand stitch this edge down, don't you? I think it would be it would feel really really good just to do that. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll take this home tonight. Okay. So we're nearly done. We're minutes from being done. One more pin. So, got it pretty well pinned in place. You know, I know some of the girls are taking like a fabric glue and just like putting little dabs of glue in there and then stitching it down. Just kind of holds it in place. Okay. So there we are there. We have this bottom along here that's going to take the um, ribbon. It needs to have like a 20-inch um, piece. Ooh, look, I can just put this right through my bodkin. Ooh, look at that. This is what bodkins are made for. So this is for like running um, casing. 
through your sweatpants when it pulls out. Um, okay, so let's just slip that. Is that easy or what? Yeah. Your sweatshirt hood. And just. Okay, so we got it in there. So now we're just going to gather it up. I don't want to pull it through on the other side. I think I'll hold on, hold on to both of them, right? And just do this. Whoa, that worked. Didn't that work? Yes. Okay, so you can get that in there really cool. And just you just tie this into a little bow. Make it as tight as you can. Tie it into a little bow. You can stitch these ends so that that doesn't come out. Tie the bow. It's so cute in the back. And then in the front. You can just fold this back, take little 10 inch pieces. Whoops, that's the wrong thing. Take little 10 inch pieces. You want to keep that all tucked in there. And you can just fold over the little ends and just stitch them in place. If you don't want to see from the front, stitch it on the back side and just stitch it around. And your little Missy Bonnet will be all done. Is that cute? Yeah.